In this lesson, we're going to cover one of the most common chronic lung diseases you're ever going to see. There are also some things about taking care of COPD patients that some nursing schools aren't teaching. So we're going to make sure you know this because it's super important and you will see it on the NCLEX and you will see these patients. So you need to know how to take care of these kinds of patients. COPD stands for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So it's a chronic, meaning greater than six months, disease of the lungs, pulmonary, caused by obstruction. With COPD, we see chronic obstruction of airflow and gas exchange in the lungs. This is caused by either emphysema or chronic bronchitis. So let's look at both of these one at a time. Emphysema is when there is so much inflammation that the alveoli themselves get destroyed. Remember from the gas exchange lesson that this is where all the gas exchange happens. So if they're destroyed, we seriously limit our ability to get for gas exchange. The second condition is chronic bronchitis. This is airway inflammation plus excessive sputum production that causes them to have a productive cough. Now, of course, the more they cough, the more it irritates and causes more inflammation. So the air passages themselves are narrowed and just filled with tons of mucus. So again, the ability to get oxygen is severely compromised, but so is the ability to get carbon dioxide out. So in both cases, we see patients essentially trapping CO2 in their systems because their lungs just won't allow for proper gas exchange. Now here's where the problem comes in. This is something that a lot of nursing schools aren't teaching and a lot of new nurses just don't know. And it can cause huge problems for your patients, so make sure you get what we're about to talk about, okay? You should not be giving a COPD patient supplemental oxygen greater than two liters per minute. What? Why? What's happening? Why shouldn't you do this? Well, remember, they have poor gas exchange like we just talked about. So their O2 levels drop, their CO2 levels rise. And you're thinking, okay, aren't we supposed to give oxygen when our O2 levels drop? Well, here's the issue with COPD. This is a chronic condition. So what happens is COPD patients' bodies will accommodate to these changes. We call it the 50-50 club. Their PaO2 will be 50 when it should be 60 to 100, and their PCO2 will also be about 50, where it should be 35 to 45. And this is where they live. This is what they're used to. So in a normal person, our stimulus to breathe is a high CO2 level. If you hold your breath, CO2 levels will rise until your brain tells your lungs, hey, look, like you have to breathe now. That's our normal stimulus. So in someone with COPD who has these chronically high CO2 levels and their body's gotten used to that, their stimulus to breathe is no longer a high CO2, but instead it becomes low oxygen level that stimulates them to breathe. So here you are with your COPD patient with SATs like 88% you think I'll give them some oxygen and you put them on two liters of nasal cannula. Their SATs come up to 91% and you think, you know what, more is better, right? So you bump them up to four liters. Now in the short term, you fixed that problem, right? Their SATs are, are now 96 and you're feeling really good about yourself. Now, here's the problem. Now you started to decrease their respiratory drive and their respiratory rate will begin to drop. Their CO2 levels will begin to rise even higher because now they're not breathing much. And this can lead to CO2 toxicity, sometimes called CO2 narcosis. Their level of consciousness will drop dramatically. They'll struggle to protect their airway and they can die. Now here at NRSNG, we love you guys. We want to see you advocating for these patients and keeping them out of harm's way. So do not give more than two liters of O2 to this patient without talking to the provider. In fact, many times we'll see doctors actually order to keep SATs between 88 to 92. 
And they'll do this so we don't give too much oxygen and we don't over-oxygenate the patient. If you remember nothing else about caring for a COPD patient, please remember this. Okay, so your little 60-year-old man with COPD comes into the emergency room. What are you going to see? Well, you're probably going to see some accessory muscle use. He'll be using his abdomen, shoulders, neck, and those intercostal muscles to get good, deep breaths. You'll hear adventitious breath sounds. They could be diminished, crackles, or even wheezes. You're going to see a barrel chest, and this is a classic sign of a COPD patient. That's when the rib cage expands over time because of the patient trying to take deep breaths and all of the air trapping, and that's, that's happening, okay? So all that air trapping that's happening creates this expanded barrel chest. You can see here how the front of this person's chest is expanded out like a barrel. You're also going to see some congestion on the x-ray like we see here. And you'll see that increased PCO2 on the ABG. You'll also see the pH decreased because a high PCO2 is acidic. So make sure you check out the ABG lesson if you need additional review on ABGs. So what do we do for these patients? Well, just like asthma, we're going to give bronchodilators, then corticosteroids. Now remember, bronchodilators first to make sure the airways are open enough to receive the steroids. We're going to monitor SpO2 and ABG, remembering that their baseline might be abnormal. And we usually keep SATs between 88 and 92. We can do chest physiotherapy or CPT to mobilize those secretions and to help clear the airways. Now we're also going to have them increase their fluid intake to upwards to 3 liters per day, assuming that it's not contraindicated, like for a heart failure or a renal failure patient. But that can help thin out the secretions and make them easier to get out. And then we're going to focus on patient education. Some of the things we're going to teach our patients are going to be the pursed lip breathing technique. Now this can help them to get full expiration and deeper breaths. Now a lot of times patients find it hard to eat big meals or things that require a lot of chewing. So because of this, we can suggest to them they, they, they do uh, smaller, more frequent meals. This can help them to avoid breathing problems, but it can still make sure they get adequate nutritional intake. And then, of course, they need to learn to identify their triggers or allergens and avoid them, if at all possible. The most important thing here is smoking cessation and avoiding secondhand smoke. COPD patients should never smoke. Some of them are also going to be on home oxygen, and if there is smoking in the home, that can cause a huge fire hazard. Now, you'd be shocked. This, this really happens, but patients will be on oxygen and still light up a cigarette. And then they're going to show up to the emergency room with massive facial burns. So instruct your patient, no smoking. So our priority nursing concepts for patients with COPD are pretty obvious, I think. Now, of course, oxygenation and gas exchange. Be careful that we don't over-oxygenate the patient and put them at risk for CO2 toxicity. And then patient education is important to teach them how to manage their symptoms. Use inhalers and safety precautions, especially if they're on home oxygen. Now make sure you check out the care plan and case study attached to this lesson to see more details about nursing interventions and what it's like to actually care for a patient with COPD. So remember that COPD is chronic obstruction of the airways caused by either emphysema or chronic bronchitis or a combination of both. Emphysema is destruction of the alveoli due to chronic inflammation. Chronic bronchitis is inflammation and excessive sputum production that's going to obstruct airways and impair gas exchange. COPD patients often live with a low O2 and a high CO2 level. Okay, their bodies accommodate to this and their drive to breathe shifts. Instead of a high CO2 sim stimulus, they now have a low O2 stimulus. So we have to be cautious giving supplemental oxygen. Now we need to encourage the patients to use pursed lip breathing, stop smoking, identify triggers, and avoid them. They also need to increase their fluid intake if they can and eat smaller, more frequent meals to make sure they get the nutrition they need. Now our main nursing priorities for these patients are going to be oxygenation, gas exchange, and patient education. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. 
Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.